Hello, and welcome to Automate with Red Hat Ansible. I'm Daniel Newman, Principal Analyst and Founding Partner at Futurum Research, and I will be your host for this series of high-impact, short conversations about topics that should be important to you. Today, I'm joined by Sean Kavanaugh, and we're gonna be talking about network automation. Sean, how you doing? I'm doing great, thank you. So, I wanna start out this, uh, this episode, and let's get right at it. You know, Talk about kind of what are what's going on with network automation and why it's important to enterprises today. So, despite <laughs> all the cool things happening in network automation, still the majority of networks today are driven by command line only, meaning person on computer is typing commands one at a time to do kind of repetitive tasks. And unfortunately, they're not automating, so that's what we're trying to do with Ansible network automation. So, if I'm being pretty obvious about it, the benefits are. Uh, saving time, which is money. Time is money. So it's also automation forces a paradigm where you kind of, obviously, if you're typing commands and you're tired, you're going to make mistakes. So whether it's Red Hat Ansible or automation in general, automation forces a kind of methodology where you kind of are going to review the commands because that command, that network command is going to be run on thousands of switches at the same time. So it forces some kind of human error to go away. Yeah, and, and of course, companies right now are, they're struggling, Sean, with the, the deluge of data. So the automation conversation at scale is humongous, automating everything, automating processes, automating uh, you know, different worker tasks, automating customer experiences. But of course, automating the network yeah. kind of is the foundation, right, of keeping things up Plumbing. and running. <laughs> you know, so how do companies sort of take advantage of, what are the ways they're you know, putting automation, network automation into their day-to-day? -day. So, the way we try to do it is start small and think big. And this idea is that automation, for any use case, regardless if it's a network or not, is we try to get them to have, kind of, get some time back. As you said, like, everyone's reactive right now. They're not proactive. So you have network architects, you have Cisco certified experts wasting time typing commands. Like, it doesn't make sense. So this time back, any time back, if it's 10 minutes, 15 minutes, you don't have to boil the ocean to get some benefits. So we try to do kind of cool, short tasks that are read only, like configuration backups. Like there's plenty of tools that do that, but we start that with Ansible to give them a way to work as a team. Because it's always a cultural change, not just a technical change for a team to work together. So you have a ton of interactions with customers in your role. You're you know, talking to customers, you're yeah. talking to peers that have been doing this a long time, and just kind of trying to get a sense. I mean, because you mentioned some of the cases where people are still typing in command, but I mean, how, how much of that do you still see where that's happening versus companies that have sort of started that modernization and automation process? I think outside of the hyperscalers, <laughs> you see like Facebook or Google or um, Microsoft, I don't think there's a network today that's not having some portion of it being driven manually or through like a web UI where someone's point and click. So if you walk down the street here in Raleigh and go to like NC State or U University of Chapel Hill, some major network for a campus, guarantee that some portion, maybe not all of it, is being driven manually at some point. Um, and even if you have some automation going on, what we're seeing a lot of times is kind of ad hoc automation happening on this, or uh, ad hoc manual changes like bespoke changes happening, which can get out of sync with automation. And that's kind of what we try to do at Red Hat is get that whole team to start working together. So it's not just one guy automating, you have a team automating together in concert. Yeah, as, as analysts, we've definitely noticed that the, the way the conversation is sort of pushed out to market would be almost to indicate that everything has, has moved as fast as those hyperscalers that you mentioned. Yeah. Having said that, the reality is that this transition is kind of slow. I mean, you're, you're like the hybrid cloud company. Red Hat yeah. is super focused. Of course, IBM, the parent, is super focused on hybrid cloud. And it's, you know, we hear this narrative, like everything's in the public cloud. And of course, it turns out like less than one third of workloads today are actually in the public cloud. It sounds like it's a little bit the same, like automation is being talked about as if we're there. But in many cases, we're still in very early the early days. There's still a ton of opportunity right now just to kind of get to the base level of what automation can do for your for your firm. I think we're, it's amazing how little automation there's taking place sometimes when you look at it. So there might be like point tools where like a process or a applications deployed as automation. But I mean, even think of the public cloud is like you still have workers that are 
at their office or at home and they have networks, there's service provider networks, there's all these things happening that could never be in the cloud because you're trying to reach people. You're also seeing this big push to edge. So networks always been at the edge because you have some way to reach them. It's again plumbing, it's pipes. So you have to automate like retail stores. If you walk into like a big hardware store, there's a Wi-Fi network when you walk in. Like there's network devices everywhere and it's only growing. Um, so it's it's just kind of it's just kind of like just started, which is kind of weird because I've been doing this for years now. But when we look at kind of data from analysts, it seems like it, we're chipping away at it, but there's so much potential still, which I see as a cool thing because we see how much technology has gotten more interesting, but there's still lots of potential. Well, the market's growing. The overall TAM for uh, cloud for software is growing and therefore the opportunity for automation grows. As you know, one of the thought leaders in this space, someone that's regularly podcasting and sharing and YouTubing and talking about this, Sean, where do you see this trend going? Whew. Man, there's a, there's a bunch of ways it goes. I think, I think the next thing is, I mean, obviously we're seeing like a lot, this next trend of going towards GitOps is we kind of had this, all these phrases a few years ago, it's like infrastructure is code. We have this idea of CICD and like all the buzzwords, but everything's kind of moved towards kind of more structured approach, more approachable for like the, the normal engineer. So it's not just a DevOps team, it's the network team actually doing it. And you're seeing a lot of kind of centralization of tools as there might've been a hundred tools five years ago. Now it's getting down to like, these are the network engineering tools. When you look for Ansible, it's now become like a job requirement for a lot of companies when you search it. That's one of the numbers we used to advertise. So I think you're gonna see kind of this idea of like more prescriptive automation techniques like GitOps or net GitOps. You're gonna see more orchestration between teams. So we kind of talk about silos breaking down, but in reality, the silos became automated in, in more modern companies, but they weren't really still talking yet. So I think that next thing we want to solve too, what we try to do with Red Hat Ansible, is allow kind of ways for these teams to communicate in an automated fashion, because you'd be amazed how many financial institutions are still emailing each other to like set up a new VLAN or something. Absolutely, it's the, it's the you know, it's what ties together these silos and having sort of, a, I would say, veins, arteries, and capillaries. You need yeah. to be able to move things in between, and that's what automation can do without adding layers of complexity and bureaucracy, which a lot of enterprises struggle with. So coming to the end here, Sean, love for you to give the audience a few tips and some advice from your experience. How do people get started with network automation? Yeah, so we have a bunch of cool demos on Ansible.com that you can kind of self-drive, so it's, it's a good way to get started. We always say, again, start small, think big. So like backup tasks, um, we kind of move into infrastructure awareness, which is grabbing facts from your network. So imagine just you're just trying to get an awareness of what's happening in your network. It's still read only, so you're not making a risk to actually do change control. But now you can actually like audit your IPAM, your IP address management, in a tool like Infoblox or Netbox. Um, that's just time savings in itself, is just figuring out like what do I have in there? And one of the, like when I was a support engineer in networking, one of the problems I had was like, sometimes the server's slow, some generic answer, and just getting read-only facts about that network, you just might see like, oh, I have 50 east-west links in my data center. One link was misconfigured, like with a bad MTU. Now if I can just grab all the information out of it, like monitoring wouldn't have helped you there, because it's just doing like pings to a loopback address to see if that server's online, where if I grab all the facts, I can actually audit what's in my network, see what's there, and a network engineer can start getting to that point where they can automate when a ticket's open to grab the information. So kind of start small with read-only kind of automation and just do, just try to solve one thing at a time as you go up the paradigm. Don't try to just get into like, I'm gonna automate the whole network or you'll fail. The old metaphor, you've seen it with automation, with big data is how to eat the elephant and it's, it's yeah. a bite at a time. Yeah. Uh, it's a big task, there's a lot of opportunity. People out there are taking this on and again, it's been great talking to you, Sean. Yeah, thanks, thanks so much for stopping by. Thank you for tuning in to Automate with Red Hat Ansible Automation Platform. Please subscribe to hear and watch all of these episodes. To learn more about Red Hat Ansible, you can follow the company on Twitter at Ansible or visit the website ansible.com. For more on Futurum Research, follow at Futurum Research on Twitter or on the web at futurumresearch.com.